He's, well, okay, there, Russia's answer to Captain America. Let's talk about the Red Guardian. Hi, my name is Nando, and in this video series, I look at a character from Marvel Comics, talk about their history, their powers, their personality, give you some reading recommendations, and I look at all of that through the lens of their new card from the trading card game, Marvel Snap. So if you're here to talk about Marvel Snap, that's great. If you're here to just learn about the Red Guardian, that's most of the video. So let's start. There have been seven Red Guardians. Some are more important than others, obviously. The first Red Guardian, canonically, is a man named Alexei Lebedev. This man was apparently a 1940s era Red Guardian who worked with Captain America and Namor and fought Nazis, and I guess was a representative of Russia's part of that conflict. Now, this character was not introduced until the 90s, and is never referenced, obviously, before that. It does feel like the next Red Guardian is the first Red Guardian, but it, it, he serves the same purpose here. This guy is just you know, Russia's answer to Captain America, who fought alongside Captain America during World War II. Uh, he died and never comes back. The second Red Guardian is Alexei Shostakov. This is the main Red Guardian, kind of. He first appeared in 1967 in Avengers issue 43, written by Roy Thomas with art by John Buscema, George Bell, and Jerry Feldman. And if you see the cover, you're like, oh, is that the one with the Red Guardian? Yeah, it's the one with the Red Guardian. Now real quick, my favorite part of this cover is just, you got Red Guardian, the whole Red Guardian, taking up like all the page, the big word Red Guardian. He's the only Red character here. And they still put a little arrow that's like, here he is. There's that, that's the Red Guardian. And it's not really pointing to him, it's pointing to his name. And also says on the cover, destined to be the most talked about supervillain of the year. And wait till you learn his startling secret identity, which is kind of interesting. All right, so let's start here. He's a bad guy for most of his run. Recently, especially when the character showed up in the MCU and became like a fan favorite, they tweaked him a little bit, made him a little bit more honorable, but that's very funny considering some of the other things his character's done. Basically, Alexei was just a normal Russian, he was a pilot, and he met Natasha Romanoff. Now, not Black Widow, he met Natasha, and they got married. So this guy is Natasha's husband. They were both experts in their field. He was an expert pilot. She was obviously eventually going to be a spy and went to the Red Room and all that. But the Russian government wanted to do something with Alexei. So they faked his death, didn't tell Natasha, she never found out, and turned this guy into the Red Guardian. Now, what do I mean turned him into the Red Guardian? What superpowers did they give him? Nothing. They gave him a costume and a shield. And that was it. They were like, you go be the Red Guardian now. Now, he shows up in this issue, fights the Avengers, and then it's revealed that the Red Guardian is Alexei, Natasha's ex-husband, who she thought was dead. He takes a bullet for her and dies. Now, there are other Red Guardian stuff happening in the meantime, but let's stay on Alexei for a little bit. Later, in Daredevil Volume 2, Natasha and Matt go on a mission together. Obviously, Natasha has like a thing with Matt. They're not like, obviously they're not at that same level that like Matt and Electra are at, but they dated and you know, they mess around from time to time. And obviously they're also friends. So she's like, listen, I need some help. And he's like, man, I wanna hit somebody. Let's go do Black Widow and Daredevil stuff. Turns out the villain of that story is Alexi. And it's like, oh my God, he's alive and he's a bad guy. The Avengers capture him and take him to jail. And he'll show up a little bit later, this time trying to start a war as the Ronin. And this is one of those things where it's like, who's the Ronin now? It used to be this guy and now it's this guy. This happens with the Ronin every so often. But that was Alexi, again, a bad guy. Now for a while, Shostakov doesn't do anything, but in a very recent Black Widow series that I'm assuming partially was set up this way to kind of dovetail with the Black Widow movie, a lot of Black Widow's villains got together and did a big scheme to trick her into thinking she was living in like suburban America, made her into trad wife, I guess is what you call that. And Alexei joins the villains, but he's like, eh, listen, I don't really hate her anymore. I was pretty much the problem here. So when the time comes, Alexei takes a bullet for Natasha, pretty much saves her, and it's like, okay, he's kind of rehabilitated now. He has paid for all of his crimes, which he hasn't, because this is like one thing versus a lot of stuff this guy did. But, you know, from this point on, he's back on the good guy side. He shows up again, allies with Yelena, and fights the Winter Guard, which is basically Russia's Avengers, and does a full good guy thing. Like, it's like, we gotta take these discs and give them to the people because it's the truth and it'll expose all the corruption. And you're like, okay, he's a good guy now, but he's also kind of like bummed. Like he's sad because of how much of a bad guy he was and how much nobody trusts him. And I would say that's kind of where the character is now. He just joined the Thunderbolts in the new run. And again, this is probably because they want to put him in the movie and the movie is essentially Black Widow 2. That's where Alexi is right now. He's not a bad guy anymore. 
He's like not even an anti-hero. He's just a former villain who a lot of characters don't trust and who has a lot of problems. The way you can tell it's Alexi usually, besides this costume being a little different, is now they draw him with a beard. So that's how you know this is Alexi. And that's pretty much all we got for him. He's not an incredibly consequential character. Obviously he had his one storyline. He was Natasha's ex-husband, which is kind of an interesting thing. And then he disappeared for a while, came back, did bad guy stuff. And then very recently, because of the movie, now he's a good guy again. Okay, third Red Guardian. The only woman that is ever going to be Red Guardian, Dr. Tanya Belinsky. She's not incredibly important. She joins up with the Defenders, which is not the Daredevil street level heroes team, but the Doctor Strange and his goofy team of Hulk and Valkyrie and stuff. So she joined that team for a while. Then she left, became a space character, joined up with Quasar for a little bit. Not sure what happened to her. We haven't seen her in a while. Next one, Joseph Petkus this is number four. Kind of important. He's the first Red Guardian to become part of the Winter Guard because originally either the Red Guardian was working alone or he was a member of other teams. But they created this team called the Super Soviets that eventually became the Winter Guard. Now this team composition changes a lot, but the mainstay members, you usually have a Red Guardian. You almost always have a Dark Star, although who that is changes when she's a mutant who can manipulate the Dark Force. I think she's a mutant. Pretty sure she's a mutant. You have Ursa Major, also a mutant, also in the Black Widow movie, who's just a guy that can turn into a big bear. And then you have some sort of robot man, usually the Crimson Dynamo or something like that. There's other members of that team. They have a Thor, the Slavic god Perun, I believe. They also have another villain god monster thing, I think, named Chernobog. They have a Vision named Vostog. They, they've got a whole bunch of guys. So Petkus goes on some adventures. Eventually, he gets in a fight with Immortus and dies. But yeah, Petkus, more or less a good guy, formed the Winter Guard. Next up, fifth Red Guardian, Krasno Granitsky. His character is not very important. And he's the guy that Alexander Lukin shoots in the first issue of the Winter Soldier series. Next up, Anton Ivanov. This is the sixth Red Guardian. And this one, from what I could tell, is the character the Marvel Snap card is based off. He is not the most significant Red Guardian. Like, he's fine, but I, I don't know why he became, like, template for this guy. His deal, very simple. He's an engineer. He used to pilot a Crimson Dynamo suit. He's a good guy, leads the Winter Guardian. Turns out he's a robot, gets his head ripped off, and then put in, like, I don't, even though I don't want to say it's like cryo sleep, but they just like put it in like storage. But this character did not know he was a robot, and uh, that's the end of him. He gets replaced by a character named Nicholas Karienko, who is known as Vanguard, who is the seventh and final so far Red Guardian. He's a mutant, so he actually has superpowers and create kind of force fields and energy projection stuff. Uh, he is also on the Winter Guard. Again, this is really a revolving door, and I don't know if this was supposed to be like a take on like the Soviets or just burning through Captain America's. Not to say that like our American Captain America's lasted forever, but like it does feel like it's like, oh, let's try again. Oh, the other one's dead. All right, well, let's get a new one out. And uh, that is not a problem that uh, the American Captain America's had so much. It was always like Steve Rogers, and then another guy, oh, Steve Rogers is back, and then another guy, Steve Rogers is back. But like there, there was a main guy. As far as first powers go, he doesn't really have any usually. Sometimes, if he's a robot, I guess he has robot durability. And if they're a mutant or a human mutate something, they get those superpowers. But the actual Red Guardian thing, no superpowers, no super soldier serum is attached. They teach you how to use the shield. They give you that shield. That's a weapon. They give you the suit. Alexi also seems to have a boomerang weapon that he likes to use. That that's fun, I guess. Uh, but yeah, he also has the shield. They're good fighters. They're usually pretty clever. They're like scientists and they're generally good leaders because they are also the leaders of the Winter Guard, usually. As far as personality, you know, they're all different. Alexi's kind of dumb, uh, but he's on the road to redemption. Uh, the other ones don't really matter that much. And that's really it. Obviously, we've seen the Red Guardian in the Marvel Cinematic Universe very famously in that thing that we all know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick, yeah, apparently the villain from season four and five, who was also kind of MODOK, is also Anton Ivanov. So he shares at least the name with one of the Red Guardians, and he's also Russian. So, like, that's interesting. I mean, the character's not really Red Guardian, but, like, that's a pretty specific name. So, uh, you know, that's something. But realistically, the version of Red Guardian we know the most, who seems like he's sticking around for a while, is the one played by David Harbour in Black Widow and then Thunderbolt. And obviously, we're going to see what if in the marvel zombie show seems like he's gonna be a pretty big part of the universe going forward and overall i think he was a pretty popular character coming out of black widow 
he was funny. He had some fun action moments. He was kind of silly. I think a character like that is always pretty fun, like the dorky dad. Now that I say is the, easily the biggest difference with how that character works in the MCU versus in the comics. In the comics, he's Natasha's husband. In the MCU, he is her kind of dad. Like they're not that far off in age. So he's like 10 years older than her in real life, but he has a beard and he's all sad. So it's like he's, he's much older. And apparently that character did what he was supposed to do, raised the girls and then ended up in a jail. We never figured out how apparently Ursa Major exists. And according to that actor, that is that character. Like he can turn into a bear if he wants to. So that's interesting. And yeah, the Red Guardian's kind of a washed up hero, but he did exist. Like he has action figures and people know who the Red Guardian is. So I do think it's a little bit confusing what his deal is. He says he fought Captain America, but like, did he? Because Captain America's never mentioned it. Did he maybe fight Bucky or Isaiah Bradley or something like that? I don't know. Eventually, I feel like we'll probably figure that out in the Thunderbolts movie. And yeah, he's in the Thunderbolts movie, especially because this character seems to be attached to Yelena, who is maybe the leader of the Thunderbolts. It's unclear. Overall, I wouldn't say the movie version of Red Guardian is a very good version of the comic Red Guardian, but now he is because the comic Red Guardian changed into the movie Red Guardian. I would say as far as required reading, both of the pretty recent Winter Guard comics I think are pretty good. So the first one is just called Winter Guard, came out a couple years ago. It's by Ryan Cady, with art by John Basaldua, G.B. Morissette fan, Federico Blee, and VCs Ariana Mar. It's a fun story. They kind of throw you into it and you just kind of got to go with it. Like when a character shows up and they're like, oh my God, it's you, this character we all know, you know, just take it on face value that that is who that is. They, a lot of them are Avengers analog. So it's pretty easy to understand how they fit into it. But then I would say my main reading recommendation for the Red Guardian is Dark Star and the Winter Guard. A very short three issue series written by David Geller with art by Steve Ellis, Scott Hanna, Van Staples and Scott O'Brown. I think Dark Star and the Winter Guardian is kind of the more fun book. I did enjoy this one more. The reason I think Winter Guard comes first is because that one also has Alexi. So beyond having one of the other Red Guardians, it has the character who might as well be the main Red Guardian. I don't think it's even worth reading. I mean, you could read the other older Red Guardian stories, but realistically, that character pretty much got a hard reset after the movies came out. So like, again, you, you can enjoy those and those are good. But like going forward, I imagine this character is going to be pretty close to what we got in the comics recently. And the new Thunderbolts run, I've liked it so far, but I have only read the first maybe three or four issues. This bit's going to be real quick. In Marvel Snap, the Red Guardian is a three cost, three power with the unrevealed ability to affect the lowest power enemy card here with negative two power and remove its text. So he's a deck card. He can take whatever the lowest power card is, give it even less power and then take away its text. So I imagine like in my head, the card that this is most useful against is someone like Iron Man or Cerebro, because there are a lot of cards in Marvel Snap that have zero cost, but do a lot of cool stuff. So the fact that this guy exists as a counter to Iron Man is, is cool. How on earth does this relate to Alexi or any Red Guardian? I cannot figure it out. He's not good at neutralizing powers. He's not specifically good at fighting weak people. He's like a Russian answer to Captain America. So you could kind of play it out like that, I guess, like the same way that US agent has a Captain America ish power. Like he would be good against Captain America. He can, you know, negate Captain America's effect. So it takes a lot of power off the board and depower that Captain America card. I do think he's going to be really good against cards like Luke Cage, for example. Like he pretty much works the same way as Enchantress. Also really useful against characters like Nebula and Sunspot. A lot of those one power cards that you see a lot of these days. But like overall, I don't see where this power comes from besides it is fun in the game. If one other thing that's interesting about him, I don't think he has any real interesting synergy with like Black Widow. Uh, he's bad for Yelena because Yelena with the Widow's Kiss puts a zero cost, zero power card on the opponent's side of the field. And it has the ongoing ability that it has minus four power and you disable that ability if your side of location is full. So it's like if you fill up that location, it becomes a zero zero, which is still not good. Like it's a dead space, but it's not a negative four. But if I played my Yelena card and then followed it with my Red Guardian, he would affect the Widow's Kiss. Now he would, you know, take two power away from it. But by wiping the text off of the card, it actually makes the card better. So like that's kind of funny that they don't work well together. It doesn't really combo well with the other Thunderbolts. One other thing that's worth mentioning, every member of the Red Guard gets their own costume. It seems like the 
card in Marvel Snap is based off the Anton Ivanov costume, which, like, I guess makes sense. It's a cool-looking costume. I wouldn't say he is in any way what I would think of as the main Red Guardian, but that black helmet is is very him. And you can see the same thing in the Luchador costume, although the Luchador one, you can maybe put a little bit more interpretation into it. I would say the uh, Spotlight Cash, the Victor Farrow, which is mwah, gorgeous, does feel like it's an Alexi uh, just because of the solid red. Like, that looks like the original Red Guardian. So... There's, there's one of those there, but it could be anybody. This card could be like six different guys, seven if they put a variant uh, of the of the woman in. But yeah, we've had a lot of Red Guardians. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will see you around.